Welcome back. Today, we're going to do a haul video and we're going to do it a little differently. I thought we'd make sort of a game of it. And I'm calling that game, Why This and Not That? When I was at the Goodwill with Jocelyn, I picked up my purchases, but I also stopped and took some photographs of some other items that I elected not to purchase. And I thought we would talk about why I purchased one item and not the other. So we'll be right back. Well, before we get into the haul video, I thought we would quickly check back in with our friends, Senor De Fonseca and Senor Carolina. Now, as you may remember from last time, these are two intrepid gentlemen from Portugal who spoke not a word of English and did not even have access to an English Portuguese dictionary, yet they decided to write a book explaining to their countrymen how to speak English, and it is called English as She is Spoke. And in this book, they provide all sorts of useful phrases and simulated conversations, the sort of thing anyone needs when traveling in an English-speaking country. And today, I thought we would look at their conversation with the hairdresser, and apparently this is Typical of what they expect a conversation with a hairdresser to be like. Master hairdresser, you are very lazy. You keep me back at home. I was to go out. If you not come sooner, I shall leave you too. Sir, I did come in a hurry. Shave me. Yours razors, are them well? Yes, sir. Look not to cup me. Comb me quickly. Don't put me so much pomatum. What news tell me? All hairs dresser are newsmonger. Sir, I have no heard anything. Tomorrow, be more early. Bring me any news. Are you great deal of customers? I have enough for to maintain me which, by the way, I think that is the hairdresser's way of saying, I do not need to put up with your abuse. But, lest you think that is an isolated conversation, here are some random phrases that you will need when traveling in America. It must to get in the corn. He has pulled me by, he has pulled me the book by hand. He laughs at my nose. He jests by me. He has spit in my coat. He has me take out my hairs. He does me some kicks. He makes them on purpose. He give me a box on the ear. He has scratch in the face with her nails. He has strike in the face. And all I can say about that is they must have been heading to Dodge City because they were certainly expecting a very violent time in America. So, thank you so much, Senor De Fonseca and Senor Carolino. And there's plenty more where that came from. Love this book. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the things I purchased. And let me start with something for which I have not taken comparable pictures. This is a lamp I picked up for $1.97. And yeah, Jocelyn gave me a kind of funny look when she saw this, but here's why. This is an upcoming lamp project. This is a little lidless ginger jar that is going to be the base of our lamp. This is the little stand. Um, the ginger jar was about $3 and the stand was $10.50, so obviously three times as much. 
But given the fact that I've already got about $13.50 in this little vase, I wanted to cut costs elsewhere. So I got my socket, my rod, my wire, all you out for $2. So that was the reason for purchasing this lamp. It's going to be cannibalized for lamp parts. And if you make lamps, I would strongly suggest you take a look at grabbing an inexpensive lamp like this one from a thrift store and reusing the parts. It's a lot cheaper than buying new parts. And if you shop carefully, the parts you get will be good. They'll, they'll be adequate for the purpose. I can even use this little collar piece here. So you will see that on an upcoming project. But that, no comps for that because that's in a category all its own. So let's take a look at this. This is a set of five plates made in Japan. And I picked this up for $2.97. And we're going to take a look at some comps for that. Now, I currently have the pictures on my phone, but I'm going to transfer them to the video. Um, I think the ones we are going to look at are, uh, it's a yellow pattern. So let's take a look. Okay, those plates were also hand painted. Um, they're not from Japan, but why would I choose these instead? First of all, the condition is very nice. There's a lot of gilding, and that's something that usually catches a buyer's attention. We've got a nice rosebud pattern on this. And again, Japan, the quality is a little superior. So that's why these and not the yellow ones. Um, oh, and this set, I should probably mention that this set is probably going to sell for somewhere between $15 and $20, which is a low ball price. Uh, I don't usually like to get dishes in sets of five because we're accustomed to dealing with uh, even numbers rather than odd numbers. Nevertheless, it's a nice little set of dessert plates, and I think it will do well. Um, this. This is a Chinese rice bowl. This was 99 cents. And I've got another rice bowl here, a Japanese one. And let me pull my picture up here. Yeah, there we go. Um, definitely has a more abstract design, but this one is classically Asian. It's got the beautiful blue bamboo pattern. People who buy Asian wares are going to prefer a classic design like this, especially if they are getting one lone rice bowl which clearly they are not using as dinner service, they will be using this as a trinket dish or um, possibly even a condiment dish. And they're going to be going for the more classic Asian look. This is a very historical pattern. Now, this is not an old piece. It's vintage, but it's not antique. But the design is virtually timeless. And that's what's going to sell this piece over the other piece that, um, that we'll show you now here. There's the picture. Um, Next up, this is a Japanese teapot. It's vintage, it's not antique. 
It is as plain as plain can be. But with Japanese pieces like this, it's not about the embellishment. It's about the lines of the piece. And a classic brown stoneware glazed teapot like this is, and this is service for one. Condition is perfect. This one was, I think, $2. This says Japanese teapot. Now let's take another, a look at another piece that I passed up. Okay, that one, much more decorative, much more elaborate. Uh, what you may not be able to discern from the pictures is the design is, is moriage. It's, it's a very fancy piece but it lacks the sophistication of a piece like this. This is all about the lines. This is all about just the artistry of the piece without any need for gilding or decoration or moriage to embellish it. It's just simple, classic Japanese lines. So that's why this one came home with me. And the other one, not to be offensive to the other piece, it was definitely a little gaudier, and that one stayed behind. So let's take a look at um, here, this. Vintage, not antique. This is a planter that is clearly designed for a baby's room. Um, I would say we're probably looking at something in the range of 20 to 25 years old. We're not talking anything really old, but it's nice. The colors are nice. It's pink and blue, so it's perfect for a boy or a girl. Well, why will this sell? This is going to sell because this is a pretty little baby piece, and everybody knows somebody who's having a baby and a piece like this is going to be popular, especially because of the delicate coloration. Um, a piece like this, I think we're probably looking at 10 to $15. Now, I really could not get a head-to-head -head comparison on this piece because, you know, it's a thrift store. It's not like Walmart where you can go down and find rows and rows and rows of China saucers. Uh, what I did get was uh, a Japanese vase. So let's take a look at that. There's nothing wrong with this vase. It's a, a small, um, very brightly colored cobalt blue, a pretty piece. Not vintage. This is, well... It might be vintage. I'm not going to go so far as to say not vintage. Um, might be vintage, not old. Not classic Japanese lines, not a classic Japanese design. Yes, made in Japan, but that's about the end of it. Um, that's about the only claim it has. It's a pretty piece. Will that withstand the test of time? No. It's possible I might get the same amount of money selling that vase as this planter, but I'm not going to feel good about it because it's basically junk. Um, it's not what I would consider to be a quality piece. So that's why that one stayed behind. And while we're talking about planters, here's another piece. This one I got for the glaze, and I'm sure you can see the glaze is iridescent, it's, and it's that beautiful sort of squash design. This is great. It is not marked. It probably came from an American pottery, uh, stoneware, nice. This was 99 cents. A piece like this, again, over that Japanese vase, absolutely because it's a quality piece. Now, this one is definitely vintage. This is probably 
um, from hmm, somewhere between the 50s to the 70s, so I'm going to say 60s. Really nice condition, but that glaze. Someone is going to buy this for the glaze. That's what's going to capture their imagination because it's a quality piece. Now, let's take a look at this. Okay, this is an Asian chicken, quail, rooster, bird. No idea what kind of bird. I, I really don't know very much about birds. Um, this was uh, 99 cents. I got this because, again, it's that standard blue and white Asian collector's know that this is a classic um, Asian color combination. It's a nice piece. It's heavy and it's well made. So let's take a look at another piece that I passed up. Okay, that piece is unmarked, probably Japanese, although it is depicting a Chinese fisherman. At least I think is a Chinese fisherman. He might be a Japanese fisherman. I'm really not sure. Uh, why would I choose this over that one? Because this one is a more classic design. This one is more versatile. More people are going to be taking a look at this than the other piece. The other piece would go to a specifically a collector of um, the 20th century Asian figurines. Some people like them, some people don't. The other piece, although not bad, and I did consider it, was simply a chancier buy. A buy that, yeah, Perhaps I could end up selling that. Perhaps I wouldn't. Um, just, like I said, a chancier buy. So let's take another look at some plates. Um, okay, now to forgive me because I am scrolling through the pictures to make sure I am talking about the right plates. All right. This is a set of six plates, Japanese. I didn't realize that at first. I mean, I looked at them and said, oh, that's Japanese. But the bottom plate was not marked. I had to open the package of six plates up to find the Made in Japan sticker on the back. Uh, what I did not find until I got home was one of the plates is damaged. It looks like something may have scorched it and there's a nick here so one of the plates was heavily used I would say offhand realistically speaking I'm talking about a set of uh, five instead of six on this now let's take a look at a set of plates I passed up Okay, that set is eight plates and um, and two larger plates. So it's eight plates of this size, two larger plates. Price-wise, about the same. Why this as opposed to that? Because this is a much more classic and typical design. The sort of thing that was imported from Japan in the mid-century. This is 1950s, 1960s, and it just screams Japan. This will find a home. There are people who specifically collect this sort of thing. The other plates, nothing really wrong with them, but nothing staggeringly special about them either. So that's why they stayed behind. This one came with me. This is interesting. 
These are a set of four Lusterware socket cups. And they are in four different colors, four different shades. Um, uh, blue, gray, green, um, I don't know, taupe, peach. Very nice. And the markings on this are it's Japanese. Very pretty little set. I found these packaged separately in sets of two. I grabbed one and said, I saw the other because I actually looked at the other set. And because it was just a set of two, I thought I'm going to pass up on that. But a set of four, oh yes. This is actually really nice work. Unfortunately, this is the sort of thing that the video camera is not going to pick up on. And in fact, I'm not even sure that my regular digital camera would pick up much on this. Um, very pretty little pieces. And what we have uh, here is um, another piece of lusterware that I got for comparison. And this is a souvenir plate with parrots from the Dominican Republic. So let's take a look at that. Now, I like the plate. And if that little plate was not a Dominican Republic souvenir, if it was just a little lusterware plate with parrots, it probably would have come home with me. But some types of souvenir wear just really don't sell. Uh, and this is one of the types that just don't sell. If someone were to buy it, it would they would buy it because they like luster wear and they like parrots and they're putting up with the Dominican Republic um, souvenir markings on it. It's been there for a while. It may be there a while longer. And eventually, who knows, I might break down and pick it up and say, well, I'll find a parrot lover who also likes the Dominican Republic. Maybe. Um, it's, let's see if we have a price. It's $2, which I think is very high for a plate that's only about that big. So maybe, maybe not. Now, this plate is a plate that Jocelyn found. It's very interesting. It's a very three-dimensional pattern here. It's one of those things that, boy, when you look at this um, in a photograph on film, no, it really doesn't do it justice. A very, very pretty little plate. This is uh, a wall plate. It's drilled in the back, so it could be hung on the wall. Uh, the, the cord is missing, but that's not that that's a big deal. And it has a, pa a paper Japanese marking that tells me that it's probably from the early 1960s. Nice piece. Um, I am going with that because I trust Jocelyn's taste. So let me just grab something else, another Japan piece from approximately the same period. And this is actually a much larger piece. It's a, a nice bowl. It's got some gilding on it. So let's take a look. And that bowl stayed. It's a pretty piece. Um, it may in fact be even more versatile than this piece. Uh, certainly, it's going to be more useful because you could actually put your salad in it or whatever. That one stayed, this one came, because despite the fact that that piece is probably more versatile and more people may take an interest in it, I think somebody is going to like this more. And again, it's a question of, do I trust Jocelyn's taste? And the answer to that question is yes. 
So Jocelyn's piece comes with me and the other one stays behind. So that is what I bought and why I bought it and why other pieces stayed behind. So before we go, let's just talk very briefly. Those of you who are observant may have noticed the pen cups are back. It was like Christmas morning at my house one day last week when Lisa's package came. Just pens, pens, and more pens. Uh, really interesting. This is absolutely the most exciting batch of pens yet. And, oh here, this, which stays with me, this is a beautiful little steampunk necklace. And we've got the beautiful little steampunk earring to go with it. So, pen giveaways are back on, um, which is great. I've still got a list I'm working from last time. Remember, there's a pen giveaway address, and that's in the notes below the video. That's where this needs to go. I need to know your name and address, because if I don't have that, I can't send you a pen. And um, I, I'm going to just have to go on to the next person. I need to know if you need an arthritis-friendly pen, if you need a pen for a man, because a lot of these are very feminine, and uh, they would be inappropriate for a lot of men, especially older men who get fussy about that sort of thing. I think maybe there's just, you know, some gene that tips off when you hit 40. You just don't want girly things. Who knows? But do you need a left-handed pen? Do you need a, an arthritis-friendly pen? That sort of thing. I need to know that. But really, that's all I need to know, unless you've got a special story. And there are some special pens, and I usually pull the very special pens out because every now and then someone comes up with a friend or relative that that you know is fighting the good fight against cancer or has survived just a massive health crisis. And we, we want to show our support. So if that's the case, let me know. I'll pick up one of the special pens for your special friend. All right. Now, thank you so much for being with me. I will see you tomorrow.